Well, last time uh, we discussed about the elasticities of demand and supply, uh, price elasticity and income elasticities and cross price elasticity. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the uh, government controls over price uh, that uh, in some circumstances, the government impose restrictions on the minimum uh, price or sometimes they impose restriction on the maximum price. Uh, in, in economic terms, we call it as a price flooring or price ceiling. Uh, when a price flooring or price ceiling is imposed, uh, the disequilibrium uh, is arise in the market and that disequilibrium creates either a shortage in the market or a surplus. So let's share with you this uh, PowerPoint and explain uh, in the first part uh, price flooring and the example of a price flooring. So we, uh, uh, the topic of today's uh, discussion or video is price controls and market efficiency. So we will see that what uh, inefficiencies uh, are created when a government impose uh, any type of restriction in the market. So uh, is the market is the optimum outcome or is the government restrictions play any positive role uh, towards the society? So we see uh, the disequilibrium uh, prices. Uh, voluntarily market transaction requires both So voluntary market transaction requires both a willing buyer and a willing seller. So they are exchanging without in, enforcing any uh, restriction or uh, impose any uh, particular uh, pricing. So if the quantity demanded is less than quantity supplied, the demand will determine the amount actually exchanged. So who is going to determine when there is a disequilibrium that how much quantity is actually exchanged? Uh, if uh, the demand is less than quantity, so that the demand will determine the actual uh, actual exchange. And if the quantity demanded exceeds quantity supplied, uh, then supply will determine the amount actually exchanged. So whichever is less is going to determine. And if we uh, share this diagram, so we see here uh, at point E, there is an equilibrium. Uh, so at the equilibrium, we see that the quantity demanded and quantity supplied are equal. And the exchange taking place is of the same uh, equilibrium quantity. Uh, but if we uh, set price other than P0, any, any price, so if it is higher than P0, uh, if the price is higher than P0, then who is going to determine that uh, uh, the uh, how much quantity is it going to exchange because at the higher price supply is more but the demand is less so the demand is going to decide that how much quantity is going to exchange and if the price is set below point uh, p0 then uh, the quantity supplied is less than the quantity demanded and in that case uh, the quantity supplied is going to determine the uh, exchange now, uh, the uh, one idea which we discussed that if we set a price, minimum price by the government, that's what we call it as a floor, uh, price floor. So price floor is the minimum permissible that allow under the regulation set by the government that can be charged for a particular goods or a service. So if the equilibrium price is uh, above the <clears throat> uh, floor price, uh, then it's not binding, but binding floor price leads to excess supply. So if the floor price is uh, above the equilibrium, above the equilibrium, then it is binding. And in that case, what is going to happen? Uh, because the price is set above the equilibrium at this price, uh, more supply and less demand. And by this way, there is an excess supply is going to be created. So what is the uh, real life example of uh, uh, excess supply or uh, minimum price or price floor is our wages, minimum wages. So minimum wages is a uh, example, uh, is, is a very suitable example to explain uh, the price flooring. 
So minimum wage, uh, as we know that in every province, there is a minimum wage that you are supposed to pay uh, to your employee, unskilled worker, uh, but you cannot pay below that minimum wage. So minimum wage is an example of a price floor in the labor market. And in a competitive labor market, a binding minimum wage reduces the level of unemployment. So what is going to happen? Now, one, what is unemployment? Unemployment is basically an excess uh, supply of labor in the market. So the demand is less, supply is more. So that's created unemployment. So increase quantity supplied of labor service, services. So unemployment increases. The owner of firms are made worse off since they are now required to pay higher wages and before the minimum wages are imposed. So uh, who is going to suffer? The employer, they have to pay the more wages. Uh, but we, we, the objective of setting minimum wage is to uh, help the minimum wage earner so that they can get a reasonable amount to live a good life. But at the same time, we see that some workers gain from this, those who are employed, they are uh, getting a, uh, a minimum wage, which uh, is fixed by the government. Uh, so they are going to be better off. But who is going to suffer? Other workers lose because they're uh, they lose their jobs as a result of a minimum wage increase or uh, those who are looking for a job, they find it hard to get a job because of the minimum wage. So minimum wage have a different effects in a non-competitive market. So competitive market has an impact like creating a surplus and unemployment, but it's a non-competitive market. Uh, then uh, you know that minimum wage and uh, the, the the businesses are forced to hire people also uh, in a command economy or in an economy where there's you know, so it's a non-competitive type of market. So uh, that's uh, what we want to discuss from this part. Uh, in the next uh, video, we'll talk about the uh, price ceiling, uh, the maximum price which set by the governments.